uh, building a team. And we're going to take about 15 minutes, and then we'll have as much fun as we need to have or want to have. Uh, say hello to Richard. Hey, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, my name is Richard Makowitz. I am a former 10-year veteran of the Navy, U.S. Navy SEAL teams. Uh, while in SEAL team, I was a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor, a sniper instructor. I taught land, mountain Nautic warfare. And uh, if I was you guys sitting in your chairs right now, I'd probably ask me, what the fuck does this guy know about football? Okay? All right? The truth is, you guys have probably forgot more about football than I'll ever know. But what I do know about, okay, what I do know about is performing under extreme stress and pressure. I do know what it's like to have teammates count on me with their very lives. I know what it's like to perform in environments where you're facing doubt, second-guessing, hesitation, the unknown. I know what it's like to focus and perform in an environment where you're under a tremendous amount of fear and you have to hit a target because people are counting on you to do so. That's something I would like to speak to you guys about. That's something I know intimately. And that's something I'd like to share with you guys today. All right. Before I begin, though, I want to take a second to, I want to take a second to acknowledge you. Is it easier just for me to take this thing away? Can you guys hear me? Yes? All right, I don't need this. Okay. Can somebody take this, please? Thank you, brother. All right. What I want to do is make this real simple, okay? I want to acknowledge you guys. You guys are all professionals. You guys all know what the hell you're doing. You busted your asses to get here in the NFL. You're playing at the most elite level for a football player, okay? So I want to recognize you guys for doing that, first and foremost, okay? I want to appreciate your time you're going to give me over the next, I don't know, 10 minutes. But before I begin, okay, I want to make sure that I ask for your permission to really do a good job with you, to give you something in that 10 minutes. Okay, but I want to make sure the whole team's on board for that. So I don't waste your time and I don't waste mine. So what I'm going to do is make it very simple. If you could show me by raising your hand whether you want to listen to me for 10 minutes, please do so. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay? Really, what I'm going to talk about a little bit just to start off is getting into SEAL Team. What it was like to go in and get into SEAL Team. Ultimately, their job is to basically get two things out of a guy. A man who will not quit no matter what. Okay, when chips are down, when that guy is pushed against the wall, when he has to go for six days straight, he has to perform without food or water, he has to go 14 days in the field in Arctic temperatures, he will not quit. He will not drop the ball when people want him to fucking show up. That's the first thing they look for. The second thing they look for is a man who can put his bullshit aside, his ego, long enough to show up for his guys when they really need him. Now that has nothing to do with whether I like that guy or not. It has everything to do with what I put my shit aside for the betterment of the team, that the team can accomplish anything if I'm on board. That's the only two things they're looking for. You don't quit, and you show up for the team. In SEAL Team, what's really important is I want to make this distinction. No man has ever been left behind. Shot, killed. No man has ever been left behind. Our job is, if the guy is dead, my job with the team is to go in and get his ass out. That's how much he means to me as a teammate. That is my stand. That is what I stand for as a U.S. Navy SEAL team. It's not SEAL 1, SEAL 2. It is SEAL Team 1, SEAL Team 2. Does that make sense? Guys, I need some heads to move up and down. I'm not a television, okay? All right, I, no, I don't drool off the side of your face. I need you to interact. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I bullshitting you so far? Okay. So the simple thing is they wanted to hone men into that caliber. They were willing to push us. They were willing to drive us. They were willing to challenge us to that extreme. Okay? They wanted to see what we were made of. So I was told, you know, I mean, I, at the time, I was 6 foot 150 pounds. Okay? I was told by everybody I was too small, I was too scrawny, I wasn't big enough, there was no way I could do it. A guy bet $100,000 that I wouldn't make it. I can't find the guy, but he bet $100,000 I wouldn't make it. Everybody thought I couldn't do it. 
okay? So let me get you something straight here. I felt I needed to get an edge, something that would help me out, something that I could rely on when I was freezing my ass off in that water, when they were humping me around carrying giant telephone poles, when they were busting my ass, when they wanted me to quit, when they were trying to find out what kind of man I'm going to be. Okay? I needed an edge. I was fortunate. I was very fortunate that a guy, a friend of mine, had a brother who had already made it into SEAL team. He sent me a picture. It's a silly picture. It had guys jumping out of a helicopter with a little rubber duck, a boat. Okay? But it looked cool. They were in camis. They were all sharp. They looked good. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. Okay? But what was more important was written on the back of that, that picture. It said, a man can only be beaten in two ways. If he gives up or he dies. A man can only be beaten in two ways, if he gives up or he dies. I thought that was so profound. I thought that was so spot on. But under extreme stress and pressure, that's a pretty long sentence to remember. So what I went down and I shortened it to not dead, can't quit. That meant as long as I had a thought, I was in the game, I was alive, I still had a chance. I wouldn't quit. As long as I had a single pulse in my body, I was still alive. I had a chance. I wouldn't quit. My teammates could count on me like that. I could count on me like that. See, what, what is quitting? This is really important on team. This is really important to team. But what is quitting? To quit means to give up. To give up on what? To give up on your dream. To give up on what you set as a target for you to hit. To give up on your goal. It means to surrender. I hate that word, surrender. Okay? To surrender on what? You being everything you're capable of being when confronted with a challenge. Listen. What really makes a man is how he shows up when the chips are down when he's fatigued, when everything looks like it's going against him, how he shows up, that is what a man is all about. It is not what car you drive. It ain't what house you live in. It ain't what your friggin' shirt is. It ain't what, it ain't how much money you make. It's how you show up when people need you most. That's what makes you a man. When your family, when your teammates, when they need you most, that's what it's all about. But see, I want you to recognize something. The quitting conversation, okay? It's not as obvious as some people think. It's a very subtle conversation. Quitting. It starts off like this in SEAL Team. Oh, man, this is bullshit. Yeah? I think I got to break ice. I had to ski in minus 65 degrees below zero weather to get to a place where I got to break the ice to get in the ocean and then dive on a submarine and drop a bomb off on it. You can't, I can't tell you right now when I'm getting there, I'm telling you it's freezing cold. I'd much rather be at home in a bed with somebody, a female, okay, all right, drinking something, chilling out and having a nice night. But that's not what I chose. I chose to be a U.S. Navy SEAL. Just like, oh, I just want to stop for a second. Is there anyone here they had a gun put to your head to get to this camp. Anyone, please raise your hand if you actually had a gun. Listen, we'll send a bunch of my friends. We'll come in and we'll rescue you. Okay? Is there anybody that had a gun pointed to your head to do this job? You chose this. You chose to do this. Okay? That's a really important thing to remember, especially when that quitting conversation starts to show up. It shows up when you're fatigued. It shows up when. You've got, you're pissed off. Quitting is, a, quitting is a conversation that is insidious. It'll eat at you. And it is an extremely reasonable conversation. It makes complete sense to quit. 